Oh, it's such a good episode this week. Boobs, breasts, breastfeeding, knockers, tits, all those things. But let's get down to serious business. In the next few minutes, you're going to hear how to handle breastfeeding your new baby with a nosy two-year-old hanging around. And welcome back to Sitting in a Car. I'm Sarah Sproul and I sit in a car each week answering a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. And I'm just going to read the question just so you have all the detail for this. Um, Okay, here we go. Hi Sarah, we've been using the correct terms for body parts, um, but today my two and a half year old said something about boobies and I'm not sure where she got the word from. Anyway, due baby number two in a few weeks and we'll have a go at breastfeeding, but I'm not sure how to handle it with Miss Nosy around. Um, As I didn't feed her in front of anyone I knew, I'd either give a bottle or, or if at home, I'd pop into our bedroom to feed. So just a bit at a loss of how to tackle all the questions. Maybe a podcast you could do at some point. And here we are doing a podcast about that now. So the answer to this week's question comes from the pillars that are foundational to the Evolved Family Method. And you know if you've been listening to this podcast for any period of time, the Evolved Family Method is the method I've created that supports conversations about sensitive things inside families who want to build deeper connections with children as they grow. So these foundational concepts are the beginning of all the practical tools and practices that make talking about sensitive topics easier for adults who want to avoid the shame, the embarrassment, that whole vibe that might have been around when you and I were growing up. So what you might have done in the past when you had this issue about embarrassment and breastfeeding in front of someone else or another child would be perhaps to avoid feeding in front of anyone in the first place, find a private space away from everyone and maybe even bottle field if bottle feed if you're in public and there's no private space around. And that makes absolute sense why you would do that. Many of us weren't brought up with open breastfeeding practices in the culture we were raised in, particularly if we live in Ireland or brought up in another country where breastfeeding is not the most common breastfeeding choice or baby feeding choice. And perhaps you have a strong need to keep your breasts covered up for some reason, which is feels the most comfortable to you. And that's exactly right. So what I've noticed from doing this work with thousands of families, this work of having conversations with kids about sensitive things, is when adults follow or do what feels right or natural, for example, keeping breastfeeding private, that's a sign that there's a particular effect coming into play, and that's the tongue-tied parent effect. Now, this effect causes you to feel unsure, unsure, about having parts of your body, like your breasts, um, seen by your kid. Might make you feel concerned about how to answer questions your kid might ask about breasts or breastfeeding. It might make you feel hesitant about breastfeeding when anyone else is present. And perhaps feeling conflicted about how you feel um, all these natural reactions to do with breastfeeding and breasts. Because... If you're listening to this podcast, you probably want to change or challenge that shame and embarrassment culture from the past, all around bodies, and you probably remember all that from growing up. So there's a conflict from what you want, between what you want and what your family to feel. Probably openness, shame-free, natural feelings about talking about bodies. And the conflict is between the feelings you actually have about breasts and breastfeeding. So you see, all these feelings make sense. And I understand why you would feel them. Because um, your feelings are coming from your experience in your past, from when you were growing up. And they're conflicting with the future version over here that you want to create for your own family. So in this episode, I'm going to describe three different ways to talk about breasts and breastfeeding so that you can go from feeling like a tongue-tied parent to um, and wanting to hide your breastfeeding to building your frame 
shame-free communicating family where kids feel able to communicate about anything with the adults who um, care and love them. So step one, breasts are a part of everyday life and exist to feed new humans. That's the job of a breast. They can also feel good. And that may be something that maybe wasn't commonly talked about when you were growing up. Now, the problem is when we think about these things to do with breasts, that the world around us had changed breasts into sexual pleasure items only. And that means that there are rules about them. They shouldn't be seen as functional parts of their body. Um, and maybe they shouldn't be seen at all. And so if something is designed for sexual pleasure, according to the world we live in, then um, the things to do with sexual pleasure generally in our world are um, meant to be hidden away, right? It's private. So if breasts are private and should be hidden away, and we've been taught that, then another example of that would be like if we were taught that our hands are sensitive and um, shouldn't be seen and should be hidden away. So think about if we believe that about our hands, how hard would it be to care for our kids and ourselves in a way that's easy without showing our hands? How would you do that? How would you feed your kid if your hands were, were had to be hidden away? What would you do? So how much would that cause you to struggle to even do the simplest tasks um, to make sure your kids have the food they need? So making a sandwich, you'd have to have your hands under a tea towel uh, while you're trying to butter bread. Or maybe you'd constantly have to wear gloves when you're peeling an orange for your child in the playground. So it's weird when you think about it like that, that we have a functional part of our body and there's these outside rules that have told us it can't be seen, like our hands. Um, the rules when they apply to boobs, it's really weird. Boobs are amazing things. And um, so when you attribute the same rules we have for boobs uh, to our hands, um, it becomes very weird. So feeding a new baby when a toddler is around and answering your toddler's questions, you are doing something wonderful for her when you do that. You're destigmatizing breasts and breastfeeding. And that means your small kid will have more confidence and strength of purpose around this part of their body when they grow up. Point number two, remember that your toddler is not doing anything wrong by asking and looking when you feed. Um, when you're feeding, you're going to get lots of chances to use the words breasts in your home environment. So babies feed from breasts. Sometimes babies feed from bottles. You could start making sure that your family library has books about cows or lambs or goats and how they all, all babies of that sort of animal, feed from an udder. And on human bodies, an udder is actually called a breast. So photos of breastfeeding on Instagram even, that can be something that can bring you can bring those photos into your family and show her that there are lots of people feeding with their breasts. Um, and even following breastfeeding accounts on your Instagram profile can be a great way to reprogram your own mind about breastfeeding, um, being a natural part of having a baby and having breasts and um, choosing to use them to feed your baby. So it's destigmatizing breastfeeding for yourself too. I sort of think about this idea, you know, this toddler not leaving you around is um, toddlers not leaving us alone in the toilet. It's the same thing. She's using her scientist mind to gather information and to stay close to you. So this is a great opportunity to lay the groundwork for the culture in your family that we talk about everything in our family. There's nothing that we need to hide away. There's nothing that's embarrassing. We can talk about all sorts of things. There's a book. Let me get it. Here it is. I asked on my Instagram account for a good word, good book about breastfeeding. And the one that people recommended a lot was Milky, A Little Milk Making Adventure by um, Agnes Sachani and Maria Betsworth. So 
you can see the cover there um, if you're listening to the podcast. Um, it's called Milky. And books like this are great because they're part of the family bookshelf. They're part of everyday life. They are giving us a message that, oh yeah, breasts are there and some people use them to feed babies with and other people choose not to do that. And if we choose to feed babies with our breasts, then that's absolutely okay. There's nothing embarrassing or weird about that. Um, it's a natural thing. And this Milky book has different words for breasts um, and for breastfeeding too, uh, Milky and boobies. So it's a great way to get comfortable talking and uh, feeding babies from breasts. Point number three, you can teach your toddler what you feel comfortable doing with your breasts, who you feel comfortable talking about breasts with even. So you could tell her a story um, about how when you were small, you didn't get to see people breastfeeding. Um, so you didn't discover how wonderful it was and how comfortable it could be. You can tell stories about feeding her and how maybe, if this is true, it felt like magic that your body could do that. Um, you can make her feel special when you're talking about breasts and this amazing job that they can do. You can also use conversations to help her understand that there are some people that you feel comfortable talking about breastfeeding with and there are some people you don't feel comfortable talking about breastfeeding with. So you're starting to educate her that um, there are some parts of life where conversations about anything is welcome and easy and there are some parts of life where um, conversations are not easy and welcome but about breastfeeding. But this topic, this idea that there are some conversations that can be had with some people and some conversations that we don't have with those people uh, are part of everyday life, about every sort of conversation. Um, it's just like we teach our children with table manners that when we're home and we're eating soup, we sit up to the table and we use a spoon. In that environment, that is the manners and the behavior that makes the most sense. Uh, but if we're on a picnic and we are eating cheese sticks, then we are able to do that standing up and using our hands. It's a basic understanding about the way the world works, that some things are okay in some situations and some things aren't okay in other situations. So teaching her this, it could look like creating a list of people that um, it's fun to talk about breastfeeding with. So that might be a co-parent, a partner, if you have one. Um, and these conversations are a lovely time to practice your own boundaries, um, if that feels possible for you. So how much conversation do you feel comfortable with? And how much do you not feel comfortable with? And maybe practicing this boundary right now does not feel possible. And that's absolutely okay too. So you've just heard how to go about breastfeeding your new baby with a curious and maybe a little bit nosy two-year-old. But um, that information can't do you any good if you don't have strategies to care for yourself as you take on this challenge. Forcing yourself to one, breastfeed in front of your toddler or to um, answer their questions with ease because you know both those things can be good for your kid, might feel just plain wrong to you right now. And um, it's not healthy or an easy thing to do to go against what feels right to you, your gut feelings. You might just be replacing the shame that, you're, that you felt with your parents um, about breasts and bodies with a different unease and discomfort um, and that unease and discomfort would be like, I have to do this better or I have to do this right or I have to do this the same way as name a breastfeeding person in your life who you feel is doing a really good job of not feeling ashamed or embarrassed or their breasts or breastfeeding. So caring for yourself as you make these changes for your kid is one of the three pillars of the Evolved Family Method, which I teach inside the Evolved School. So if you'd like the complete method, to learn that complete method that helps parents and other caring adults avoid um, embarrassment and shame and ensures 
feelings of openness and natural conversations can happen with kids um, in your care, particularly about sensitive stuff, then click the link somewhere around this episode um, and you can leave your contact information and that way I can let you know when the Evolve School opens next. You'll be amongst the first to know. And that's sitting in a car for another week where I have answered a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person to respect themselves and the people around them. And bye for now. (coughs) (coughs) (sighs) It's not COVID. It's just a cough. (laughs) Feeding. Oh, God damn it. I keep I keep making mistakes. I hate mistakes, but I know mistakes are natural. So we're just going to go with the mistakes. Oops. Oops. Let's try this again.